Hello there, MDOT Strange here, and in this video, I'm going to go over some lighting tips and just talk a little bit about lighting and lighting in Cinema 4D because I've gotten more than one, two, three, four, five, I don't know, questions about lighting. And so I'm just going to go over a little bit about my ideas about it and how I do it here in Cinema 4D. So when we first start working on a scene or we're going to light it, um, you know, this is what we have. You start from nothing, or you should start from nothing. And just uh, before I get started into going into the stuff I'm going to show you, I just wanted to give you a thought about textures and colors. So in the past, I used to have characters with a lot of color in my scene or in my in my sets or in just different parts of the scenes had a, like different colors, right? And they looked interesting and unique on their own. But then when I got to lighting the sets and bringing lights in, I mean to simulate real lights or to bring in you know different warm and cold lights which are you know yellow like a yellowish orangish or a bluish tint they would clash with the textures and colors on my characters and sets so what I learned is to have like a very minimal or really muted or desaturated colors or no colors really in my characters and sets so that I could really get creative with the lighting without having it clash so if we're gonna go into something like uh, like a, a normal three-point lighting setup you know you're gonna start first with the spotlight and by default, um, your light is white. So I don't know if any lights in real life are pure white, but usually when I have a spot source, I'm going to make a warmer light. So something with a little bit of yellow or orange tint in it, like this. Okay? And one of the best ways Cinema 4D has to place lights is by actually looking through the lights. So what you can do, the shortcut. Well, you can make your own shortcut. I don't think there is one, but I have a shortcut of L to look through my light. But you can also click on the light and then go to cameras, link, active object. And then now we're looking through this light. So if you're familiar with the traditional three point lighting setup, you may not be. But one of your your um, your key light, which is your main light and your, and your strongest light. So I'm just going to use this to light just this character first. We're going to worry about the background after. So you want it kind of at a 30-45 degree angle from the character's face, something like that. And usually you want it from above, so somewhere like this. And we're going to go ahead and turn our shadow on for this guy and turn the light down. And then I'm going to switch back to my camera. And so let's look at what we have here. Okay, we have a guy. It has some mood, but it's flat, right? There's no depth to this. It's just totally flat. So, and something else is that this light is just going off into infinity because that's what 3D lights do by default. So the way you stop it from going to infinity is by turning on fall off and for in a really broad sense, inverse square mimics how a real light decays or falls off. And to control that, you know, you have this number here that you can slide, but the best way that I find is just to go into the top view and then actually pull it. And the way I use these lights is that I probably go maybe 10% past if I'm taking this fall off. I mean, you don't want, I found you don't want to stop right at the thing you're trying to light, go a little bit past it. That's just kind of a guideline I've gone with. So now if we render it, now we can see that we have some fall off. So it's like, okay, I like the shadow here. This is kind of okay. It's not, you know, I'm not going for anything too amazing or perfect starting off. So let's call that our key light. And so if you look at the key light from here, we have it coming at this angle. And in a traditional three-point lighting setup, the next thing you would probably add is a fill light. And a fill light fills in the darkness or the shadows on the other side of the key light. So this light is blasting here, and then we're getting shadows or darkness on this side of the model. I should zoom in. On this side of the model. So the fill light aims to create depth and definition so it comes from over here to fill in the stuff that's in the shadow or in the darkness so since I had to add these little custom you know I changed the fall off and things like that the easiest thing to do is just to duplicate that by control dragging it and uh, we can keep this one the same color so let's say these are spotlights or flashlights or candle lights or some kind of light that's going to be warmer Actually, no, let me make it a little bit of a different hue, but you don't have to. So now we have this fill light, so I can move it around and rotate it. And we can do the same thing 
I can press L with my shortcut and look through the light. It has some weird rotation. So if your light ever gets like this, it's because it has a rotation setting. Or it has a bit of rotation on some funny axes. So this one, I usually do not have a shadow on. Because then you'll get like shadows crossing each other. And then let's go back to the top. Our fill light. And depending on what kind of lighting you want, um, like some you have like there's different ratios, like your key to fill ratio, and they do different things. You can go read more about that. But you want to make it a little less powerful than your key. So now we have a key and a fill. So now it's bringing in actually a little bit too much. Let's give it some of that. So it's filling in a little bit of this side, so he has a little bit more depth. You see this this light? Let's zoom in and render it. So you see how it's catching this edge here? So it's giving him a little bit more depth or a little bit more of a 3D look. Um, but the one that, that really gets him to pop out is your backlight. And this one just goes straight behind the character. And in real life, this light is supposed to, like... What, it would do something that subsurface scattering does in 3D. So it would be going through the fab, the, the little tiny threads hanging off your jacket or through the top of your hair or something like that. You, it would catch those things and come through to the other side. But unless you're using subsurface scattering, that's not really going to work in 3D. So a traditional backlight would be like straight from back here. And you can see this from different angles from the sides, but you know from the front you're not really going to see it. So I usually use one or two backlights to kind of rim these back edges like this. And then this light, I want it to mimic like a moonlight or something like that. So I'm going to give it um, a bit of a blue hue. And we can actually make this one stronger. So before I do it, let's go ahead and add another one. Oops. I should just use the shortcut. And do this. Okay, and then we can take a look at it. So now you can see that he has a bit of a blue here on his shoulders. And something, this is another trick like that you can use in Cinema 4D that you can't use in the real world. So let's say, obviously, when you see these two blue things clashing, it looks kind of artificial. Like, obviously, there's some spotlights coming through here, not like moonlight. Moonlight wouldn't really do that. So what you can do is go to your lights and then go to, you can either include or exclude different objects. So let's say we don't want it to fall on the floor. So I'm going to go to the floor and say exclude. So now those lights won't affect the floor. They're just going to apply to the character or everything else. And you can also go include and just include the character. So now we have our character here and he kind of he looks more 3D. He's popping out. He has this little blue thing here. And so now we have the set. And I guess when I started out, I used to try to light everything with the same lights. Like I would have used a key fill and back to do this whole scene. And that still works pretty good. But then I had a friend who actually went to school for lighting or something. And he told me that important things in a scene should get their own three-point lighting rig. Or all three of these lights. And I do that sometimes. Like these things wouldn't be that um, important. So let's just go try to duplicate some some keys and fit or probably just key lights and see what we can do with these objects cuz for render time and calculations and and just to keep things kinda simpler um, I try to use as few lights as possible you don't want to start bringing in too many lights cuz then it gets confusing and so there's kind of an art to making your scene look interesting with as few lights as possible and I should probably be in garage so you can actually see it working and we can adjust this cone here go back to this one okay so now we have this crisscross stuff going on and for me this looks okay depends what I'm going for I'm just kinda like this like a studio or something like that and so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this light back here. I'm going to look through it. And then I'm going to use this as a backlight for all this stuff. So 
So I'm going to exclude the man. And then I'll have to go into the top view to look at um, the fall off because this isn't even reaching. So let's do something like that. So now we have this scene and this stuff's kind of lit up and it has some depth and things to it. But what if you want more? So if you're modeling your lighting based on like films, like live action films. So let's imagine if you look at this scene, this air is totally clean. It's totally clear. And in movies, usually what they're doing is that they're putting particulate matter into the air like uh, to make a room look more cinematic. In a live action film, they would use a fog machine and fog up the room. So how can you do that? How do we simulate that fog or those particles? So in Cinema 4D, they have two different ways to do that. So let me make sure I'm on the right light, because let's use this backlight to bring some particles in or something, or some volumetric light. And there's two ways to do it. You can use either visible light, which renders, which is fake volumetric light. It's not real volumetric light, but it kind of looks like it, but it renders a lot faster. And then we have real volumetric light, which looks really good, but takes a lot longer to render. So let's go with visible first. And when you turn on visible light, you have another fall off, which is the distance here. So if you see this ring, so that's the visible light. And usually I blast this like way past the stuff. And then you have dust, which I want to turn up. And then these other things you don't need to worry about right now. So now we have this dust or this volumetric light coming into the scene. And one of the things, like this looks really good, um, if this image is cropped here, you don't see the origin, but something you have to be careful with, with volumetrics or visible lights, I find is that you want to hide this origin of the light or the, the little umbrella or whatever the that's coming off the light, because you want it to look natural. So then something like this, we could just put the light up higher and then pull the fall off and stuff down even further, so then we wouldn't see it. And then, of course, we'd have to go in here and adjust this some more. Let's give it that much. So now we have this kind of haze in the scene. Now, this stuff is really just putting haze because we're using visible, so it's fake volumetric. If you want real volumetric, we do this. And you'll see it takes a little bit longer to render. But then this light is actually going to, like, the, the visible light just fills the whole scene. It doesn't get stopped by anything. But the volumetric light will actually stop. It's like ray traced. So, and we could even experiment with some shadows on the volumetric light. So, this still, though, looks like it's kind of just filling the scene with haze, and that might be what you're going for. But something that I found, or a technique I use, I wouldn't use a backlight like this. Like, I'd leave that one there. What I like doing is... Let's drop a camera in just so we have a point of reference to see where the actual camera is. Let me go up here. Let's turn cameras on. So here's our camera. So a thing I like doing, let's call this crisscross volume. Something I like doing to create depth in my scenes that I used in my last film, Heartstring Marionette. Um, it's kind of where I discovered using this technique is that I'll crisscross volumetric lights in the background and it gives you like kind of two depth like two layers of volumetric light so if you have stuff in your scene here like say we had a bunch of trees or buildings it kind of gives it a really nice looking foggy like depth to the scene so let's go turn on all volumetric and let's yeah 100 percent that's what we want and let's pull this all the way through so now you can see this kind of going through back there, but this light is too high. So let's bring it down here because we want it to like cut through the back of the scene. So you have this one going this way. And then normally what I'll do is that I'll cut, I'll cut them going across over each other. So like, let's try something like this. So now we have this foggy looking scene. I guess you can't really see uh, the effects too much unless you put some geometry back there. So let's take this geometry 
and let's just duplicate it a couple times and let's throw it back in Z space like this um, maybe like that let's make it bigger right so now we have this stuff out here so we can kind of see what those lights are doing so you can kind of see this one faded over there and this one over there I guess I see what you can I, I think you, you pro can probably see what I'm going for right because I like the whole Silent Hill look like foggy mysterious places there we go now we have it so this is the kind of look and the thing that I'm doing all the time because this is the mood and stuff that I like and it would look nicer if we used in this scene like a narrower lens So, and if you didn't know, I mean, I'm not a, like a master of color theory or whatever, but usually warmer colors, hotter colors, bring things forward, and then cooler colors push things back. So if you want something really to come forward or be important in the scene, then you would use a warmer color, and if you want it to be pushed back, you would use a cooler color. So that's what's happening here in this scene. And then, um, I mean, this stuff your choice of camera lenses would be determined by what you want the scene to do and what you want to go on to and I mean that's something else that I'll do a t tutorial about is like camera and lens selection and what they do and why you would use them stuff so this is the kind of the mood that I'm always creating it's just a really simple setup like this using volumetric lights cutting in the back and then warmer lights in the front and like I was saying earlier about not using color in your um, in your scenes or severely limiting your palette will give you a lot more flexibility in what you can do with the color of your lights so you can see this guy's black and white right so all this stuff looks pretty good with these warm and cold lights but as an experiment let's go and change the color of his shirt so let's say you like red stuff. Well, actually, you probably wouldn't make something that saturated. So let's say something like this. And then let's drop that on his shirt. So when you look at this now, it's like, yeah, that, that looks pretty good, right? It still looks decent, but to my eye or kind of like my color balance, I'm still, I'm like, oh, mm, this thing's kind of fighting with the blue and uh and but the the way you really see it is that like let's say we wanted to change the color of this key like for effect we wanted to make people feel sick or something so we used a green light or do some kind of sickly and then you can kind of see like this green and red kind of works but then the blue back here in my eyes it kind of clashes with it um so I think by using, or just in my experience, by using a lot of color in the scene or in the scene textures, it kind of limits my ability in how stylistic I can make the lighting. Because on my earlier projects, I had a lot of color in the characters and the sets, and then I would light it, trying to you know stylize the lighting like this, and then it just clash and then I had to do a post process it just took all the saturation out and I tried to do all this this stuff like that to fix it up so lighting for mood what other kind of moods can you create with lighting so usually you know people will be like well the more mysterious something is or the darker it is the darker the lights would be right and to a certain extent that's true but usually if you're going for horror or something scary like that you're just very selective in what you light so this background already is pretty moody and like scary but this foreground is probably lit up a little too much so to make something scary or creepy you'd probably want to really limit the light so let's start turning some of these lights off okay so now we just have his fill and his backlight which looks kind of interesting but it still doesn't look very good looks weird so let's try to mimic a candlelight because that would be something you would see in a horror movie or something like that so candle lights are warm lights so that's the color we want and they're omni lights and usually they're 
volumetric or visible. So, and they have fall off, so we want to do that. And if you just look at this, you, you can imagine that's a little too big for a candlelight. So, just for our own purposes, let's just put a little cube or something in this guy's hand, or some, some like primitive, and pretend that um, it's a candle. So let's go like this, and let's get what well, looks like a candle. I guess a cylinder does. So let's scale it down. And there's also there's actually scripts you can get online, and I have I have my own that I use, just little espresso scripts to make candles flicker like randomly, like your candle lights. And I think you can also get like candle flames and stuff. I made my own, but I think uh, I've seen like candle flames online. So you could get something that actually looks like a flame and has a flickering light and everything. So let's pretend this is our candle. You can already see that it's blasting this scene because it's way too bright. Candle wouldn't have 100%. So let's just go with that and see what this looks like. So, kind of looks like he could be lit with the candlelight, but you're seeing there's too much fill in here, and this is too bright, so we're going to have to adjust that. So, let's just start by killing this fill, and I want to keep this backlight, so let's see what we have now. These lights are still too bright. Let's kill this one. Okay, so now we're getting more of like a creepier look. And this candlelight, I know there's no flame or whatever, but let's try a volumetric. Which is way too big. So let's go here. Because a candle wouldn't be that bright, or it's fall off, it wouldn't be that big. So let's go here, and then let's try to really limit this. So this might be something that you would see with a candle, and we could turn a shadow on, maybe make it brighter. And just because, I mean, as much as possible, I try to simulate light sources. Like I try to make the light em like um, emanate from where the actual light would be. But then you're also doing a ton of cheating. So it's like, let's say this was a candle and obviously the candle the light would be coming from here but what I'll do all the time is then also cheat by bringing in spotlights to fill in areas like say on the other side of his face like yeah that this maybe is realistic as to where a candle would be but I don't really like the look like this raccoon kind of looking thing here so I'm gonna bring in this light and adjust its fall off and I'm gonna fill in the other side of his face even though I mean the candle wouldn't do this but this is 3d so we can do whatever we want and even let's do it make it blue so we can make it look like it's coming off the moon or something so now we have this warm light here coming from the candle or our tube and then we have some moonlight filling the other side of his face and this looks pretty good for having you know such a bare scene and having no textures and then I mean you can massage this and do some stuff in, in post with too but so I guess another thing to think about um, or I guess people might be confused about is to where where to put lights and how many lights should you have you know and I think oops something that you should remember that I always come back to is that just think about this being a real scene in the real world or if you're, if you're lighting live action for a photograph or video what lights would you have and where would you put those lights so when it comes down to what lights you have what what I try to do when I think about what lights I would have in 3d since we can do anything we want I try to make my light sources be real so the light comes from things that are in the scene so if there's a candle there's candle there's candlelight then obviously the blue light would be from a moon if there are other lanterns or something here or to have that light if there so I try to just use physical sources 
and then if the physical sources themselves don't fulfill the lighting that I want, then I start, you know, I fake it. I just put as many lights wherever I want that you can't really see their sources, but, you know, they, they make the scene look however I want it to look. So if we want to do it even simpler and start from scratch, um, if you see now we just have just the candlelight, right? So maybe this is more so how you would light a scene. You would fix up your your light so it looked like the candlelight that you want. Um, something like this maybe, or maybe a little less. Like that. Um, there we go, something like this. Your candle flame would be here, I don't know. And then let's add our fill light. So this is just filling in the other side of the guy's face. So we're using the candle as our key. And then we're gonna use this fill light, which is filling in the other side of the dude's face. So we can add a little more. So it's giving us some of this stuff, maybe a little less. All right, and then we don't we can't see anything in the background, which that may be what you're going for, but um, let's say we want to give some little glimpses of this stuff for mood. So then I'm gonna go and again, you know what I like doing? I'm just duplicating lights because once I set up the fall off and all that, I don't want to have to do it over and over. So let's see, we have these things back here. And I mean the goal that I always, I always have the goal of using as few lights as possible. So, um, oh, and something I didn't say is that when I'm doing these really big visible lights, in order to minimize render time, I don't let them illuminate anything. So what is that saying? So I go into here and I say either include nothing so that all you're seeing is the volumetric light. Like that's all I want from them is the volumetric light so they're not really illuminating anything. It's just kind of creating like a fog. Or if you say exclude, you can see what it will do. So you'll catch some rim on these objects. So it depends what you want, what you're going for. So I like both of them but let's say we like this and then we want to catch a little bit more of the rim of these objects so we can go like that which gives us a pretty mysterious looking thing but let's make them a little bluer and our visibility is good if we add some more dust So now we have something here that looks kind of kind of interesting and the way we can test it is again by using more of a zoom lens and going here and trying to find some composition that maybe you'd use in a film. Maybe something like this, although it is kind of weird that this is behind the guy's head, but it's 3D, we can do whatever we want. We can move whole set pieces. Oops suit our aesthetic taste. So let's say something like that. So yeah, we have the dude in the candlelight in the foreground and then this stuff, this mysterious stuff in the background. So let's make a dramatic shot, shall we? Let's go ahead and make this 120 frames then we have this and oh <laughs> this guy's left over from an earlier tutorial so he has vibrate tags on, on him so he's jumping around so let's say let's do that and then go here and then go in here and remove this guy's tags so he's not jumping around because that kills our mood so now we have this shot and you can tweak the keyframes or just manually do this to keep them in the center. So now we have this dramatic shot where we can actually add a little bit more onto it where it would have a guy 
exploring this mysterious place and he's looking around where am I what is this what is this place I'm gonna move my neck without turning my body cuz it's that weird So see, we're, get, we're getting some drama there with the light. And then, you know, we look at our light and it's like, oh, wow, he's in there in the candlelight in his trippy place. And now his candle's floating because it's not in his hand. Oh, my God. What's going on? I don't know. So, yeah, I hope you can, you've can uh, you seen some um, tips or tricks or something that you could use in your stuff. And I'll continue to make more on lighting and cameras or whatever. But if you're watching these and there's specific things you want me to cover, please let me know because there's a ton of stuff to lighting and camera work and all these things. So I guess I really don't know where to go or start. So if you guys could give me some, some guidance as to what you want to see. And I'll go and do my best and try to to um, make a tutorial or kind of display something so that's it for now as a kind of general little lighting thing um, I'll do cameras next so until next time M dot string saying the boy I think there is one but I have a shortcut of L to look through my light but you can also click on the light and then go to cameras link active object and then now we're looking through this light so if you're familiar with the traditional three-point lighting setup, you may not be, but one of your your um, your key light, which is your main light and your and your strongest light. So I'm just going to use this to light just this character first. We're going to worry about the background after. So you want it kind of at a the 30, 45 degree angle from the character's face, something like that. And usually you'd want it from above, so somewhere like this. And we're going to go ahead and turn our shadow on for this guy and turn the light down and then I'm gonna switch back to my camera and so let's look at what we have here okay we have a guy it has some mood but it's flat right there's no depth to this it's just totally flat so and something else is that this light is just going off into infinity because that's what three which are you know yellow like a yellowish orangish or a bluish tint they would clash with the textures and colors on my characters and sets so what I learned is to have like very minimal or really muted or desaturated colors or no colors really in my characters and sets so that I could really get creative with the lighting without having it clash. So if we're going to go into something like uh, like a, a normal three point lighting setup, you know, you're going to start first with the spotlight. And by default, um, your light is white. So I don't know if any lights in real life are pure white, but usually when I have a spot source, I'm going to make a warmer light. So something with a little bit of yellow or orange tint in it like this, okay? And one of the best ways Cinema 4D has to place lights is by actually looking through the lights. So what you can do, the shortcut, well you can make your own shortcut, only the lights do by default. So the way you stop it from going to infinity is by turning on fall off and for in a really broad sense inverse square mimics how a real light decays or falls off. And to control that, you know, you have this number here that you can slide, but the best way that I find is just to go into the top view and then actually pull it. And the way I use these lights is that I probably go maybe 10% past if I'm taking this fall off. I mean, you don't want I found you don't want to stop right at the thing you're trying to light. Go a little bit past it. That's just kind of a guideline I've gone with. So now, if we render it, now we can see that we have some fall off. So it's like, okay, I like the shadow here. This is kind of okay. It's not, you know, I'm not going for anything too amazing or perfect starting off. So let's call that our key light. And so if we look at the key light from here, we have it coming at this angle. And in a traditional... Hello there, M. Strange here, and in this video, I'm going to go over some lighting tips and just talk a little bit about lighting and lighting in Cinema 4D, because I've gotten more than one, two, three, four, five, I don't know, questions about lighting, and so I'm just going to go over a little bit about my ideas about it and how I do it here in Cinema 4D. So when we first start working on a scene or we're going to light it, 
um, you know, this is what we have. You start from nothing, or you should start from nothing. And just uh, before I get started into going into the stuff I'm going to show you, I just wanted to give you a thought about textures and colors. So in the past, I used to have characters with a lot of color in my scene or in my in my sets or in just different parts of the scenes had a, like different colors, right? And they looked interesting and unique on their own. But then when I got to lighting the sets and bringing lights in, I mean to simulate real lights or to bring in you know different warm and cold lights on three point lighting setup the next thing you would probably add is a fill light and a fill light fills in the darkness or the shadows on the other side of the key light so this light is blasting here and then we're getting shadows or darkness on this side of the model I should zoom in on this side of the model so the fill light aims to create depth and definition so it comes from over here to fill in the stuff that's in the shadow or in the darkness so since I had to add these little custom, you know, I changed the fall off and things like that, the easiest thing to do is just to duplicate that by control dragging it. And uh, we can keep this one the same color. So let's say these are spotlights or flashlights or candle lights or some kind of light that's going to be warmer. But actually, no, let me make it a little bit of a different hue, but you don't have to. So now we have this fill light so I can move it around and rotate it and we can do the same thing 